Wu-Tang and American Saga, Season 3, Episode 9, After the Smoke Clears. RZA pick up his mother from the airport. He goes into a, a music shop looking for a particular record from David Axel, a particular song, um, Holy Thursdays, I believe. And the guy said, what you trying to do, find something to make a sample? And he walks out and he gets his mother from the airport. He said that he's working on something, but it's in his head. He's trying to get this tune in his head. And she's talking about um, that he worked with Lou Rawls and other people, this particular artist that he was looking, at, looking for. And um, then you also see Ghostface back in Staten Island. He's on the block. You got the chains on, got the you know the jury, and everybody greeting him and everything, and it's a black car in the background. They have this birthday party for his son Infinite, uh, ODB, Divine, Raekwon, um, and his mother and Shuri. They all celebrating his birthday, and he's telling his son that. When he was a, a child, he didn't have things that he got. He just had his record plays playing these Delaphonic songs. His mother used to play it for him whenever he was sad or feeling lonely and cheered him up, him and his brothers. And uh, he's getting all the different presents, uh, Elmo, Bear, and um, a, a Wii. He got a Wii. Um, Nintendo, Wii, whatever. Um, and they're having a birthday party. And basically, uh, RZA says he's out. He's about to go get some equipment to work on this new sound he's trying to plan out. And he was in the studio with his engineer trying to get him to buy this record. Every time he come back, he had a different type of record. It wasn't what he was looking for. So, uh, yeah, he goes to this music shop. He buys new MPC, new equipment, keyboards, and this electric sliding guitar. So, Ghostface is trying to work on a project with the Delphonics for a song for his record. He goes pick them up, and um, they drive, and they talking about, you know, they're playing for the for the uh, song, and this suspected black looking car that's that he keeps seeing. I don't know if it's in his mind or his head or whatever, but uh, he gets mad. The car comes up on him, and he pulls out his gun and starts shooting. And um, the Delphonics are upset, and they get back to the studio and they. Like they kind of don't want to do the song now because they shook up by what you know what happened. And he's in there rapping. He sees them distressed, and he goes then talks to them. And um, he said, "You just want to go ahead and just lay your tracks down. And I can go back and do the, my my vocals later." He said, "Yeah." And so they do the song, and I guess they out. So they don't want no more parts of that. And he goes back to Sheree and tells Sheree that the Delphonics are mad because he put out a gun on somebody that he thought was trying to creep on him. And she's trying to tell him that you can't do the things you used to do. You got a family. You got a, a son. You got to grow and do better. And he said, this is who I am and I, I can never change. And he storms out, goes back to the studio. And... Uh, we find out too that Bobby and Divine's mother, uh, the reason why she's back in Ohio because Jerome did something to her. She had bruises on her arm. And Divine basically wants to do something. And um, the Rizzo also wants to do something to Jerome too. And they said, we. Uh, we got to go to Ghostface house. He got some stuff that we could use to go against Jerome and uh, so they go up there and 
Mom is making breakfast for Sheree, and she said, if anybody else want breakfast, it's plenty for everybody. And Ghostface, it wasn't there. Uh, she said she had some uh, turkey bacon for him. So, uh, basically, they inquired about something that's inside Ghostface's uh, room and some kind of music thing where they weren't looking for me looking for something else and she's telling them there's no tapes back there no music back there and she um the mother shows the scars and said that's the reason why she left ohio because of jerome and he violated his parole and because he violated his parole that he's going back to jail he's got he had to work out with his lawyers so um He's telling, she's telling them not to get involved because y'all don't need to rest up your lives. You don't been through enough trouble in your life. You're doing better. Continue to grow and keep doing better. This is like she told him uh, when you said that you want Wu Chain to move forward and do the next phase of their, you know, extension of their career. So um, that is interesting and. Um, that was going on. Then you also got power. Uh, some investors have approached him and they want to buy him out. And it's a lucrative deal, but he'll lose all control of the brand. But he'll be able to be able to reap the benefits in years and many years to come for the rest of his life. And his father told him it's a great deal. But he said that he's not too sure that he needs to ponder that thought. When he first drove up there to the Macy story, he showed Raekwon they got a new he got a new ride and they playing some Wu Tang music and they see the stuff at Macy's stores. And the second time they go back up there, he's saying that this might be the last time I'm looking at it because I got offered this look at the deal. He said, Why don't you take the deal? He said the deal would basically allow me to lose control of the branding. And uh so Raekwon said, I'll, I'll put some money up for you because he did the same thing for Raekwon when Raekwon was on the street homeless, although he, he gave him a house, but he was still working for him, you know, pushing weight. So he remembered that. He said, if I get out the, the Wu-Tang members to invest in it, but y'all might not get none of your money back in investment. So all the, I guess all the other Wu members had to put up the money also too, like Raekwon did for him to keep, uh, uh, progressing the brand without selling out ownership to another another corporation. So you got that going on. And um, we find out that uh, they they take uh, their mother, Rizzo and Devante, their mother to the Wu Mansion and they're saying, what are her plans for, for it? She said she wants to stay in New York and be close to her grandchildren, but uh, she doesn't know. And they were talking about, remember all the houses they had in Staten Island, all those were the mansions and stuff. She said, yeah, what are you going to do? She said, are we moving again? He said, no, not exactly. We're going to get you your own house in Staten Island. So they're going to buy their mother a house, and then she hugs them and everything's real emotional. And... Uh, Riz is in the studio with an idea to, to make this uh, new uh, new sound. And he's working with this uh, sliding guitar. And he finds uh, the thing that he needs to do to, in order to make this sound. And, and uh, he calls Ghostface and plays him this uh, the track. 